Hi, and welcome back to Mercury Go for Launch. And the last time I was in here, um, I had a bit of fun. It was very obviously just a VR experience rather than something you actually play or fly yourself. It's not like it's um, VR Kerbal Space Program or something like that, which now I think about it would be a ton of fun, right? Um, but the last time I was in here, one of the problems I had was the graphics, or a lot of the textures in here were really hard to read. And so this time I realized when I ran it up, I was already running on high, like it gives you an option for running, uh, choosing your graphic settings and it was already on high, but there was ultra as well. So I've set it on ultra and loaded and like all the textures look fine now because like all these people's pictures and all that kind of stuff were really blurred and even this was kind of blurred. So anyway, we did mission one, which was freedom seven. So this time we're gonna do mission two, which is Liberty Bell. Um, Liberty Bell 7 was America's second manned flight, well, crewed flight. The mission closely followed the flight plan of the previous flight, however it was the first mission to use the revised version of the Mercury capsule. This version of the spacecraft had many notable upgrades including a new overhead window, colour-coded control panels and an explosive hatch. And it was Gus Grissom who flew it. Wasn't this the what? Oh, it's Liberty Bell 7 is the one that um, ended up uh, sinking, isn't it, if I recall correctly? Right, start mission, see how it goes. Yeah, I remember there being, um, well, I wasn't alive at the time, but like when I was a kid I remember, whoa, okay, I wasn't ready for it being quite so in my face. Um, right, we've come in, lights on. Okay, on Ultra, this is way way better I don't know if just changing the graphic setting made a difference or something like that there's a oh, natural torch okay checklist um, but this has made a hell of a difference okay right excuse me I'm just gonna cough <coughs> oh look at that this is this is amazing okay um oh um uh, oh, it's a bit, it's a bit sensitive. Uh, norm, we need to set that to norm. Don't know who norm is, but we're going to set it to norm. Okay, that's on norm. No, it isn't on norm. There we go. That's on norm now. Auto um, rescue, uh, rescue switch auto. So presumably that's done. Press reg handle in reg handle. Pressure. Oh, press reg, whatever that is, push, no, <laughs> there we go, uh, this is the retro at switch, attitude, do you think, uh, the, the switches are just so, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Th there could do with being a little bit of a delay, after you switched it, it should uh, require you to press the trigger again or something like that would be ideal. Landing bag switch to auto. Okay, control fuel readings, auto and manual. Tap the dial <laughs> because that's the thing. Okay, we're all good there. Rate indicator switch, rate indicator switch. There we go, to on. No, it didn't work. Oh, come, come on, come, come, come on, there we go, on. Uh, periscope manual engage lever disengaged. Cabin pressure indicator reading. Tap the dial. We're all good. And this is the cabin temperature indicator reading. 68. I don't know what 68 is in proper temperature measurements. Um, relative humidity indicator reading is 62. I'm sure that's good. Coolant qual quantity indicator reading. This is actually so much easier to read. So, so much easier to read. I'm actually really, really pleased with how good this looks. I, I put off coming back in here because I was really disappointed with the um, quality of the textures and things. It made it quite hard to play, but it's actually really behaving itself well this time. Coolant quantity indicator reading. Tap that. Okay. Um, O2 flow switch. Rim, but that's not a switch, and apparently I already have done that thing. Okay, right, all done. Next page. Oh my god, there's so much to do. Suit fan switch. 
I am a fan of my suit, it will keep me alive. Uh, Norm. Okay. There we go. Uh, DC volts knob to M. There we go. Am, 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 amita switch. Amita. 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 To norm. Right, that's on norm. Um, ASCS AC bus switch to norm. That's on, what's that? I can't read what that says. Standby. Norm. There we go. Standby battery switch on. Standby battery switch is on. ISOL battery switch, standby. Inlet valve power switch to norm. Open that up. Close. No, that doesn't need closing. Okay. Oh, put that back to norm. Okay. That's just. Um, so, oh, do forgive me if I um, sniff now and again. I am in the middle of a cold and it's annoying me. Audio bus switch to norm. Fans AC bus switch to norm. Shit. Why did that make all the lights go out? That's the fans. Vox power switch off. It wants me to close that. Okay. Apparently I should close that. Vox power switch. Vox power switch to off. UHF DF switch to norm. Done. Transmit switch to off. That is off. Yep. Beacon switch to cont. Done. Okay, that was all stuff that they did. Right, switch to full internal power in... Oh, there was a way of speeding up time as well, wasn't there? I can't remember what it was. Oh. Hey! Oh, I hadn't done this yet. I haven't been outside and had a look. I forgot that that was a thing. So cool. I Did they launch these completely standalone? I, do you know, I can't actually remember. It's a, a while since I looked at any of that kind of stuff. Um, I always thought it was like a gantry. Right, let's put that there for a second. Oh, that just re-centers my cockpit. Let me get centered. I'm trying to find a comfortable spot. There we go. Right, so there was a window there and there. So this time the window is just in front of me, which sort of makes sense, I guess. There was a way of speeding up time. I've forgotten how to do it. Menu. Pause. I don't want to pause. Um, no. We'll go to the checklist. Ah, oh, there we go. It's the left stick. Let's just count down time. Switch to full internal power in two minutes. The one thing I'm never going to get over with this, or rather the thing I really appreciate with this, is just how claustrophobic it makes us feel. DC volts knob, check all battery voltages. Right, that worked. Nice old battery switch to norm. T minus 10, okay, right, let's speed up again. Final checks. You would have thought that the time from launch would show me something. Okay, that's not something I can change. This looks great. It looks so realistic in my headset now. So much better than the last time I was in here. Okay. Launch control switch ready. Where are they? Ready. Control fuel readings, auto and manual. 100 and 100. Cabin pressure indicator reading is looking good. 
cabin temperature indicator reading is 68, whatever that is. Um, relative humidity indicator reading. I'm sure that's fine. Coolant quantity indicator reading. So this is all the checks I was doing before, but it's while I've been sat here, I suppose. Right, just tap all these dials. Right, this needs DC volts knob one. No? I don't know what it wants. Oh, let me try again. I think it's one. I think it's one. Escape power post jettison. Escape tower. I can read. I can read. I'm trying to follow what they're saying. So 50 seconds to launch. Pull that there for the moment. So I would have expected that to actually show me Okay, Paris gets in. I would have expected that to show me the countdown to launch, but it seems that's going to be the um, Escape Tower Jetson post launch. going. So we can't really see, <laughs> can't really see that we're actually launching, like there's no indicator of horizon. It's just this window that looks forward. Altitude is it climbing? Yep, it's definitely climbing. Coming up to 10,000 feet by looks of things. Fifteen thousand. Oh, really speeding up now, twenty thousand. Noise is getting a lot less. 25. Really starting to matter now. 30,000. 35. Really accelerating now. 40. 45. 50. Pretty much above modern day commercial aircraft. Now look at that. Altitude climbing. Oh my god. Really, really, really starting to ramp up. Apparently, we've still got the. Got about 35 seconds till the tower goes yet. Right, we've looped around. We're over 100,000 now. Roger, we are go here. I stand by for cutoff. 
Hey, oh, I almost missed that. There goes the tower. Periscope's open. We're tumbling a bit. Looks like we are tumbling a bit. Where'd my rocket go? Oh, there it is. Wow, this is amazing. This looks so much nicer. Oh, that's interesting. So he didn't get to see the booster because because he's just got this little window. Right. Okay. We're supposed to be doing stuff. Right. A squib switch. Off. Auto route. True. Jet switch off. I'm too busy having having a look out the window that I wasn't paying attention to the fact that uh, DC volts main. So that's presumably M. There we go. Control fuel readings. Fuel looks good. Cabin pressure indicator reading looks good. And cabin temperature, that's still 68, still 62. That looks good. Coolant quality, there we go. Suit pressure indicator reading looks good. Secondary O2 point reading. Secondary O2 point reading. Is that what I just did? Okay. Can I control it now? No. It, it's got this whole thing about fly-by-wire mode. And st oh. To use the fly-by-wire control system, perform the following. A ASCS switch fly-by-wire. Where's that? I've also got some kind of alarm. That doesn't sound good. I've got a retro warning as well. <laughs> Where's the ASCS switch? Oh, there we go. Fly by wire mode. Squib Okay. I think we've moved on. We've moved on. Oh my god. I'm going to put that back to non. Transmit switch. I think the game's way ahead of me. Transmit switch UHF. There we go. Oh, right, okay. I didn't keep up with what we were supposed to be doing. I'd quite like to actually have some time. Um, maybe uh, in the later missions when you're in orbit for a while, I'll get to explore this a bit more. It looks like I can pr maybe fly. Oh, we've got more stuff to do. Too busy sightseeing. Okay, that's set back to NOM, which is what I did. All right. There goes the retro pack. It's interesting how it just kind of floats away. It's a bit cloudy, can't see a whole lot. This must have been amazing, and maybe a little bit terrifying as well. Okay, so these are all doing their own thing. I take it that's a good thing. Looks like there's nothing for us to do yet. We're just here for the ride at the moment. Roger, how does it look out the window now? 
Oh, the sun is coming in, so all I can see really is just uh, darkness. Roger. You have some more time to look if you like. It's nice, the window's kind of dusty. <laughs> it's weird that I can put my hand out. You kind of hope that there would be collision so it would stop. Right, so we're going to have half a G very soon, presumably, well, I was going to say presumably as we start hitting the atmosphere. I wonder if it really it makes sense that it would be this bright in here suddenly, almost like he needs a shade, just so he can see the controls better. I like that there's hand shadows though. Alright, got some blue sky again. Slowing down enough, that's good. I wonder if this is going to model the door blowing off. I don't even know where the door is. Is that that's the door there, isn't it? Is that the door there? That'd be really tight if it is. Okay, the altimeter is active at 65. It's 60. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, I get some contrail. There's any shockwave. Got a contrail. Interesting. 50,000 feet, I'm feeling good. Wow, really falling good. into cloud. Falling into cloud. Okay, 40,000 feet, do you read? Okay, 35,000 feet if you read me. 30,000 feet. Drogue, drogue is out. Is the drogue out? There's a drogue about to go out. There goes the drogue. There's the drop chute. Periscope has extended. There's nothing for me to do yet. Okay, we're coming down to... Descent slowing. 13,000 feet, if anything. 13,000 feet. It's this last little bit. Oh, uh, there the goes the chute. Come on, unfurl, unfurl. We're good. That must have been nice to see. Landing bags deployed, I think. Yep, landing bag has deployed. But yeah, there's this bit of like go tearing down there, and then suddenly this last bit is a really slow bit. Notice there's a reserve chute looking at that. Again, confirm again. Has your auto fuel dumped? Over. No, oh, and manual fuel has dumped. Roger, roger. And I'm um, in the process of putting a tent back on the door. Six and a half thousand feet. Where is the door? I'm going to guess that's the door. Really tiny. How the hell did anyone get in? Okay, 
uh, passing down to 6,000 feet. Everything is good. Uh, going to open my base plate. Definitely a bit further out. Somewhere out into the Atlantic, for sure. I wonder what this arrow, obviously direction travel, but I wonder what that little square there means. He's looking around with the door. I just realised that's time from launch, not time to launch. I'm sure I read that as time to launch earlier. Do you have any word from the recovery group? Okay, 4,000 feet. He got a hole in his chute. Roger, Roger. They haven't modelled that. Feet. Yep, passing through 3,000. The wind noise is increasing. Okay, we're doing well. They don't seem to have modelled the clouds that we mentioned. Over. The range of descent is varying between 28 and 30 feet per second. Well, it's what we're just saying. Roger, and once again, verify your fuel has dumped. Over. You got a head just uh, bearing 020, zero zero, I think. Okay, uh, I can't see a rate of descent. I'm sure it's here somewhere. Oh. Unless you're showing zero. He said he dumped his fuel, but there's loads of fuel there. Now, if this is the mission I, I seem to remember it was, are they going to model the door blowing? Maybe not. I can't remember how it finishes. Ooh, can I hear a helicopter? I think they modeled, modeled the helicopter last time.
Whoa, it's a bit choppy. Definitely a bit choppy. It must have been kind of scary to have done all of that and then just be sat bobbing in the sea, waiting rescue. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do now. There's nothing on the checklist. Like an, oh, that's how I end mission, isn't it? I think that's it. And I think they've actually skipped over the part where the door blew off. So I suppose I've got to end mission. Oh. Oh, they're still playing the conversation. I gotta assume that they haven't um, scripted and modelled that bit. So let's end mission. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. Oh, I've lost my arms. There we go. Governor, Congressman Thomas, Senator Wiley, and Congressman Miller. Well, it looks like I did it. So next time is. Friendship 7 marked a turning point in the space race. For the first time, America attempted to put a man in a full orbit of Earth. So far, only the USSR had achieved this feat. It's going to be John Glenn. Three orbits. That would actually be a very long session, wouldn't it? Because it's like, what, about 90 minutes to orbit? Um, so <laughs> like four and a half hour session. I don't think I'll do the full three orbits. As tempting as it is, um, I'm hoping that you get the option to do some all, you know, do a bit of orbiting. Because I actually I want to explore that fly-by-wire thing or whatever. Because I, I suspect that lets you actually control the um, spacecraft. It'd be kind of fun. Since Friendship Seven. Oh. Oh, okay. I was hoping that the model that was in front of you was going to be each of the... I didn't notice if it changed. No, it just stays as, as Friendship 7. Okay. That's still quite neat, though. And I'm, I'm constantly amazed at just how... Can I see inside it? No, okay, it's empty. Um, I'm constantly amazed at just how, how small it was inside. Um, that must have been... Uh, kind of scary in a way. Right, well I'm definitely going to leave it here. This was fun and um, it, a lot more enjoyable and a lot more playable with the better textures. So it seems like it just I just needed to go to Ultra. Oh, the switch to Ultra caused it to load uh, refresh textures or something. I don't know. But the last time it was impossible to read a lot of stuff, whereas this time it's pin sharp and easy to read. So anyway, from this dip into Go for Launch, Mercury. Have I got that right? I realised at the last time, the last time I played it, I got the name wrong. It was go to launch, go for launch, Mercury, go for launch, Mercury, go for launch. I'm sure that's what it is. From this dip into Mercury, go for launch. Thank you very much for watching. And goodbye. Christianity began last.